If you're concerned about the size of your other storage on Steam Deck, you're not alone. This can be a big problem for new users and old users alike. Since this channel is both a teach and do channel, we're going to cover a multitude of things to help educate you on what your file system should look like so that you can find the things that should not be there or maybe things you forgot about. Stick around. Ah uh, yes, the eternal question. What is all this other crap clogging up my storage space on Steam Deck? Over the years, Valve has improved this storage readout to include common things like DLC, shaders, and downloads, but that ugly yellow bar is still there, showing you unknown things that are taking up your storage, and you want that space back. Or maybe you don't. Since you don't know what it is, you don't know whether or not you want it or need it. The first half of this video will be explaining what things might be in the other category, and what things are not. So once we get to the second half, the do part, we know what we're looking for. Worth noting, this video will assume several things. First, you're not relocating your system files with some tool promising to free up drive space. Second, you're not using any weirdo tools that install digital lockers like Ubisoft or EA. These tools do not do things the same way that Steam does, and it will likely cause you a lot of suffering while trying to find things taking up space. Right, so let's get started. Before we know what we can prune, we need to know what things are there for a reason, along with what they are and why you should care. Just because you can't identify something doesn't mean you should willy-nilly just start nuking stuff. If in doubt, leave it alone and just get a bigger SSD drive. The most common components on a Steam Deck are the operating system, game binaries and their DLC, shaders, Proton compatibility prefixes, non-vanilla apps like MUDEC and others, and finally, user files, things like downloads, captured videos, screenshots, you know, that sort of thing. Pretty much everything on your deck lands in one of those categories. We won't be looking at user files, so obviously your videos and downloads are pretty accessible and you're on your own to nuke those. But let's look at the rest of these components in a bit more detail. The operating system is what Valve uses to run your Steam Deck. It is immutable, so you can't really do anything about it anyway. Since the 64 gigabyte SKU Steam Deck has 46 gigabytes of free space out of the box, 18 gigabytes of your deck's SSD is operating system, and there's nothing you can do about this. Game binaries and DLC. These are the game files and the downloadable content. What is not contained in the same location are save files, configuration files, and other similar stuff. Those are stored somewhere else, an obfuscated location, and this bites a lot of new users in the arse. But to be fair, it bites longtime users too. This component is all covered in the storage settings, and you can clearly see what is being taken up here. You want Baldur's Gate 3? You're giving up 150 gigabytes of storage. Shaders, the great perceived villain of space taking on the deck. If you aren't clear what shaders are, please check out my video. I'll have a link in the upper right. In reality, shaders are not typically a large consumer of your free space. Where shaders end up bulking up are when transcoded videos come down and are stored in that folder. Some games, like A Hat in Time, will take up to 12 gigabytes of, quote, shaders, but are really just a ton of videos that Steam Deck can't play, and Valve transcoded them for you. I have a video in the upper right that will tell you more about transcoded videos and why they are required. As with game binaries and DLC, it is clearly identified in the storage settings. If you want to free that space up, you'll need to remove the game using them. Proton compatibility prefixes. Proton is the magic behind making Windows games work on the Steam Deck. Again, I have a comprehensive video on this in the upper right that explains in great deal what Proton is and how it works. What you need to know is that Proton prefixes come in two flavors, Steam and non-Steam. Steam ones are shorter and apply to everyone. If you install Next Machina, the Proton compatibility folder will be named 404540, and everybody gets that same number. This is within Steam's control and purview. If shaders are needed, there will be a same name directory in that folder as well. And when you uninstall a game, 
the game binaries, the DLC, the shaders, and the Proton compatibility prefix goes with it. These prefix folders are typically where undesired data is because along with those Steam approved installs come the non-Steam game entries. If you install Battle.net or EA app or some old abandonware game from a tutorial, it creates a randomly numbered folder to store it. No one can help tell you what's in there. That number means nothing to anybody else but you and your deck. What typically ends up happening is people install Battle.net or the Genshin Impact Launcher or something of that nature. The install gets its own prefix, its own shaders folder, which is all fine. Battle.net is like 600 megabytes or something, so it's not very big. The problem comes from when someone tries to install, say, Diablo Immortal with that Battle.net. Since they don't realize that the, quote, C drive is really inside the Proton prefix, that non-Steam prefix grows to 100 gigabytes, and Steam can't report on it. Steam doesn't know about or care about non-Steam game installs. So it throws all of those into other on the storage settings screen. You have no idea what is in there because Steam doesn't know. This issue is pretty easily solved by using what I coined as centralized storage. Again, I have a video for this explaining what it is and why everybody should be using it for non-Steam launchers. Long story short, Proton prefixes are likely the cause of your missing other space, and nobody but you can look into them and decide what is there worth keeping. Last but not least, third-party apps, things like Emudeg, discover store installs for things like Disk Usage Analyzer, the tool we'll be looking at next. All of these things take up space. Steam's storage screen will not show you any of this as it is not within Steam's purview. If you install Emudeg and move over 100 gigabytes of ROMs, all of that space will show up under others. Steam doesn't know, Steam doesn't care, you're on your own. Right, now that you know what makes up a typical Steam Deck, you have the knowledge and background to hopefully make some educated decisions on what is taking up other space and what is safe to delete or keep. Now we're ready to move on to the do part of the video. In desktop mode, open the Discover Store and search for Disk Usage. Disk Usage Analyzer should be the first item on the list. Other people like FileLite, but I find it doesn't give me enough information, and I prefer how Disk Usage Analyzer works instead. When you run the app, you'll be asked to choose a starting location. If you're interested in your internal storage, choose the home folder. If you're interested in your SD card storage, that should be on the list too. Probably unique based on your particular SD card name or lack thereof. We'll click the home folder. After some time, the contents of the drive will be enumerated and you are shown the main window. The ring UI isn't my favorite, but it will roughly show the allocation. We're more interested in the file list on the left. Looking at the list, you'll see the folders in the home directory and how much relative space it is taking up. It is clear as a bell that dot local is where all the space is being taken up. So let's drill in. In that folder, there are two folders. Again, it is obvious what's taking up space, the share folder. Now we'll dig in there. This is where more interesting things start being shown. Nothing in this folder, however, should be touched, but we do see that Steam is taking up the most space. Let's dive in there. Pretty much everything in this folder is off limits too, but if you have a web browser installed, you may see a bunch of space in the user data or app cache. Again, leave this stuff alone. Steam apps is the biggie in here, so let's drill into that. Here's where the action is. We have common, which is basically where game binaries and DLC that are installed on the SSD are stored. And since that's covered by the storage screen, we'll ignore it. If you have something downloading while you're doing this, you're likely gonna see space being used here. It will clear up after the downloading is over. The two folders we really care about here are Compat Data and Shaders. In reality, we don't really care about shaders because those are represented in the storage screen. But if you're curious what games are sucking down shader space, see what folder is taking up the space, put it into the SteamDB website to get back the game associated with it. Then you can remove the game, which will take the shaders with it. Let's look in Compat Data. I have very little non-Steam stuff installed, but you can see a breakdown of game IDs versus space here. 
My top usage is 200-927-4841. And I can tell you by the length of it that that is not a Steam issued ID, but a non-Steam ID, which means Steam DB can't help us. But 256-5550 is a Steam ID, and a trip to Steam DB can answer what that game is. Most people that have other space issues aren't accounting for EMUDEC or aftermarket tools they installed. The rest have a compat data or proton prefix folder that is out of control. My deck is nice and clean, so I don't have anything to show you. But at this point, you're probably seeing some damn large folders there, and they're probably non-Steam IDs, meaning you're sort of on your own. We can use a tool called Proton Tricks to help us decipher the non-Steam IDs. When we run it, it will show us real Steam and non-Steam game entries, along with whatever the entry is called. In my case, my non-Steam game taking up the most space is GOG. I installed GOG as a non-Steam game. Now, had I installed a bunch of games under GOG, this would be huge, out of control maybe. But since I use centralized storage methods, I don't keep the games from these lockers in the Proton Prefix. I install them elsewhere where I can actually keep track of them. And if the Proton Prefix blows up or it's accidentally removed or EA botches it yet again, my games don't have to go with it. Now, maybe Proton Tricks isn't showing you the goods. Maybe the prefix folder isn't even listed. Let's dig into the Proton Prefix folder to see if we can figure it out. When we dig in, we see nothing of use. We need to actually dig into PFX or prefix and finally drive C. Now, once you're in there, you should suddenly feel at home if you're a Windows user. This is what you know. Windows folder, program files, all the good stuff. Now we can start digging into those bigger folders. Going into program data, suddenly I know what this Proton prefix is for. It's for GOG. Same thing with program files. The files inside tell the tale of what it's used for. Now, if we dig into one of my other non-Steam folders and then PFX and drive C, we'll check out the program files folder. Bam, front and center, Ubisoft. This is my install of the Ubisoft Connect client. Perfect, I wanna keep that so this prefix is safe. We wash, rinse, and repeat until we discover where our space is being used. Now, only you can decide what is to be kept and what is to be removed. That's why there's no magic special cleanup tool designed to help you. No one can tell you if you wanna keep Ubisoft Connect or not. No app will say, hey, you've got the EA app installed and there are 10 games being stored in that prefix you should've used centralized storage for. For some, the other storage issue is only a matter of knowledge and understanding. Once they know what is taking up space, they're cool with it. Others, usually those that refuse to upgrade their 64 gigabyte SSD, are going to do anything possible to clean space, and they are likely going to end up removing something they shouldn't because they don't know what they're looking at. That's gonna wrap this up. You have the knowledge and the tools to harness your other space. How you decide to deal with it is up to you. I'm Shane Armandro. If you like this video, please like, sub, hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. It all helps the channel grow, and we appreciate it. We have a Discord that you can join and get additional help, and we hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody.